Welcome back. In this video we're going to switch gears and move towards uh, making a small little project with the tools that I've currently shown you and how to apply them in a more practical manner. So what we're going to be making here um, is we're going to be making a, a simple little a little temple that you could uh, kind of, uh, you know, as if you were playing with like wooden blocks in the 3D space. So we're going to stay in object mode, moving the objects and using largely inputs to uh, shape the objects and move them around just to get a mastery of the controls of the world space here. So please follow along, uh, a lot to learn here, and uh, hope, hopefully you enjoy it. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create a simple base for this, this temple. Uh, generally what I like to do is come here to create polygons, and I'm going to go to Polygon Primitive, and I'm going to hover over Cylinder, and I'm going to click it. And again, if you've changed your thing to be interactive creation, we'll get the message to drag on grid then and also then drag for height. So again, we click and hold on the grid anywhere. First click and hold determines the base. Second click and hold determines the height. And what we're going for is a little simple base like this. Um, and what I'm going to do here, granted you don't know exactly, you know, I can't read my mind, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a, a, my little stop sign, eight-sided, uh, base here and then I'm going to build out a little temple from from that. So we're going to take this opportunity um, to uh, do this very numerically. Uh, not so much because you have to do this in, in my, you can easily just drag these things around and just kind of eyeball it. But for those that want to follow along and get very precise measurements for the purposes of this exercise, you can. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here into the channel box of this cylinder and I'm going to go ahead and change the X value to be zero. And I'm going to change the Y value for zero. I'm probably going to change it later, but change the Y value to zero and the Z value to zero. So change all the translates to zeros. And what that means is now this object is at the origin, which is at the center of the Maya world. Is it required to be there? No, but it makes things easier when you generally build to the origin um, because certain operations you do sometimes will refer back to the origin, which you will We'll experience in this lecture later. Um, so again, I'm going to change this to a, an eight-sided polygon, uh, a primitive, and again that is done under the input. So with the object selected in the channel box, I'm going to click on poly cylinder. And again, if you for some reason don't see the channel box, you can't find this. Remember, it's these icon at the top right. Looks like a little paper stack of papers, or just click on the words on the right hand side that say channel box. So again, you need to be able to see the channel box with the objects selected to see these things. Um, radius, I guess I'll make the radius here 12. And again, I might change these later. And you know, right now I've already think I might change that. Maybe I'll do 10. Granted, if you want to do something different, that's fine. But what we're trying to do is have some control over what we're doing here. Uh, the height, I'm going to just keep this 0.5. Keep a nice thin little wagon wheel type type surface here. And here's the main reason I came in this window here. I'm going to change the subdivisions along the axis to 8. And there you go. You can see you can see that object, and it's perfectly at the origin, and, and, and that's fine. So we're going to make some pillars um, now. And then a lot of this is actually the exact same things, but what I'm going to do is make a separate cylinder and come over here and come over here to polygon primitives and, uh, primitives and go cylinder. And once again, click and hold, drag them on the grid, drag up a little bit, and create an, a wagon wheel here. Uh, and I'm going to leave these ones the sides as fine, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this um, to an area here, and I'm going to kind of eyeball that. And we can do that by just dragging this wagon, you know, this little pillar piece here, and this is going to be like the, the start of the pillar. And I can easily eyeball this in the perspective view and get this and again we want to make sure you're always navigating your around your scene using alt and your your one of your three mice buttons so again alt left mouse to tumble alt middle mouse to pan alt right mouse to dolly and i can use this viewport and and you know just kind of move this again i'm just grabbing the object and moving it and to grab objects and move them just for recap is the w key so we're using the translate tool to grab an object and move it around, just grabbing those little arrows. So if I tap the spacebar and go into my four viewpoint now, 
I, if I want to, we can come in here and look at these, and we can kind of line these up. You can see I'm, I'm a little off. Um, if you're wanting to be like perfect, we we can do we can you know we can zoom in in these views and kind of look at these and get it as clean as you want. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and you know just throw a bunch of quickies at you. Thankfully, this is a video, so you can just rewind and watch them. Um, but one quick key that I like here, which is part of the reason I don't use a lot of the bars up here, is if we hold down the X key, X key, um, we can, temp you know, I don't know if you guys can see it, but temporarily the, the, the icon will change very slightly. What this is is grid snap. So if I grab this object and I can see the grid, which you can currently can in all the views, uh, if I hold down the X key while I'm dragging the object around, it will snap to the grid. So you can get pr pretty much perfect, granted, albeit it's locked to the grid, but perfect um, uh, placement of these these uh, these cylinders or objects. So in this case, I'm just going to snap it in the top view, but hold on the X key, drag it to one section that's any one of these corners will work, um, and I'm going to kind of have it there. Um, and it's always a good idea to check your stuff in multiple views. So if I come back into my side view and look at it, and it's like, oh, zooming in, it's going into the object a bit, and that's perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with having the object um, be inside another one. That is absolutely fine. Um, just be sure you don't have it floating above the object. That's very noticeable. So again, be a digital shark. Always rotate around looking. Oh, oh, that's floating. Um, so it's okay to have the object inside the other, the other one, but don't have it floating above it. Um, so, you know, it's, it's placed. I got it in this place here. And you can see I come back into my, you know, if, if you want, for sake of numbers, we can make these all even numbers. Or maybe, maybe not. <clears throat> and then I come into the inputs, and I'm going to go ahead and make the, this, um, these numbers, uh, ideally, you know, set numbers here. Just, again, for simplicity of the lecture. So I think I'm going to make the radius 1.25. And that looks pretty good. And then I'll make the height 0.5. And then I'm going to leave the subdivisions along the axis alone. So I've made this what's going to be the start of a pillar, a very small pillar here. Um, there it is right there. So that's that's one. And I'm going to build up a couple of these. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back and create another um, cylinder and go to Create Polygon Primitive Cylinder. And I wanted to um, also drop in this because if you're you have to drag on the grid, so if you're kind of at like a weird angle, you, you might not be able to drag on the grid. So just make sure you have the grid at any sort of angle um, when you do this, and you you will create these things. So that's the only one of the, one of the, the few downsides to interactive creation. You just gotta make sure you hit the grid. Um, it doesn't even have to be on the grid. It can be technically. The imaginary lines over here too. It just has to be can't be at a weird angle like this um, for whatever reason. All right, so I have this other wagon wheel that I created, and again, I'm just going to create a simple shape like this. I'm going to move it in here, and again, if we go back to our our top view and hold on the X key when we do this, we can snap this to be exactly in the same spot. Granted, you could just have eyeballed it and probably got great results, but um, holding on the X key can make sure it's perfectly there. Again, I'm tapping the space bar, move the top view, grid snap, move it, come to the side view, tap the space bar just because I want to see full screen. You know, up oh, there it is. I'm gonna move it down a little bit. Again, it doesn't really matter how much it's in there. If you you know matters too long, it's inside. I just don't have it floating now. And then again, I'm gonna come in here and change these numbers based on my preference. So we'll be able to make the radius one, and I'll make the height also 0.5. So we got something like that. So I got my two little wagon wheels here, of of uh, of um, the start of the pillar. Now, granted, um, people are asking probably at this point, especially if you have some experience in mind, why aren't we duplicating? And yes, we will duplicate, but just not quite yet. I'm um, just trying to go through, like I said, get you guys some practice at using the inputs here. Um, so again, I'm going to create one more, at least through this method. I'm going to go up to polygon primitive cylinder and this time I'm gonna create like the main part of this 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 pillar and that's way too big already but yeah good enough and I'm again moving this around um, you can again I love my quick keys if you want to zoom in on an object 
let's say you're zooming around, uh, if you tap the F key, the F key on the keyboard with an object selected, you will frame whatever is selected. It'll basically maximize that to the view. If I have nothing selected and I hit the F key, it will frame mostly everything. Or if I hit the A key, which is frame all, it'll do kind of the same thing. So you can see F key with an object selected, F key with an object selected, nothing selected, hit the F key, and it kind of zooms back out. So that's a, another quick key that might be handy for you. So I'm going to go ahead and move this pillar, sidetrack there, and move this pillar like once again to the spot. And there it is right there. Go, I'm going to go to the poly inputs. And I don't know, I'll make the radius 0.75. I'll make the height, I don't know, 8. And again, I'll just keep the rest of this the same. And then, so again, radius 0.75, height 8. Move the pillar around. And I'm again, I'm tapping the space bar to switch views. Come back to my side view. And there we go. So you can see, we have these objects here which is nice. All right, so the next thing I'm going to talk about is uh, duplication. So again, I kind of skipped past that. Um, again, we could have done that. But we're going to go ahead and uh, talk about selecting these objects at the bottom and then duplicating them, putting them on the top to finish off this pillar. Now, we kind of have uh, glanced over selections. I've been doing a couple selections here, but obviously we click on an object, we select it. Um, if we hold down Shift, when we click on things, it's Maya's form of toggle selection, which if you've used other digital software, you're, like, you're probably familiar, oh, it adds to the selection. And that's, yes, that's true, but it's a toggle selection in Maya. I mean, if I click on something else that is selected, it will deselect it. So it's a, it's a toggling selection. So I can click on these things and add and take away by holding down shift. And that's just straight up clicking. If I drag a little marquee box, that's what they call these little boxes you draw. If I drag a little box and I'm just left clicking and holding, anything this box touches will also come, become selected. So this is just a different way. Besides just clicking on them, you can drag a marquee box. But the same rules apply. If I hold down shift when I do this, it will toggle the selection. So if I had just the base selected in this example, then held down shift and touched everything with the marquee, it would deselect the base and then grab all the pillar, um, which is sometimes very useful to make selections like that. You may have noticed that some of the objects here are white, well, well the, one of them is green. This is just in Maya's way of denoting what it was last selected, um, which sometimes is important, not in this particular case. So white and green are both selected. You don't have to worry about that at the moment. Just, just know that they're all selected. So again, shift is toggle selection, and then we can drag marquees or click. Now a couple more quick keys on this before we move on. If you hold down Control and Shift, you can only add to a selection. So if you wanted that more, you might be familiar with in other programs, you can only add to a selection. And if you hold down Control, it deselects. So again, Shift is a toggle selection, which is 90% of the time I use. Um, control Shift only adds, and Control takes away. Um, it's also uh, one important thing is the marquee selection by default is a uh, select through. So if I hover down below like this and drag a marquee box, it selects through everything. So you need to be careful about that, um, especially when we start editing uh, subcomponents. So just note that selects through everything. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to select these two bottom wagon wheel little cylinders down here. And the key, quick key on this keyboard is Control D, Control Delta. And what that will do is it will duplicate the objects. Now, a lot of beginning students get hung up on this because when they click Control D, I'm going to do it right now, hit Control D, and you might may, may have saw something, but most of the time a lot of people miss it, and they're like, okay, where's my copy? Um, in Maya, by default, it creates a copy exactly in the same place where uh, you duplicated it from. So in this case, I made a copy, but they're exact right on top of the other one. So you just got to be aware of that. And then, just, again, I'm just going to click the Translate tool, which is the W key, and move these up. So if you, if you make a mistake, for example, and you go Control-D, and then, oh, I didn't make it, and then go Control-D again, and Control-D again, you're going to create multiple copies of these and have lots and lots and lots of copies. So we want to avoid that. Just know if you hit Control-D, you made a copy. Just have faith in that. 
You use your 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 functions to move them up, or you can uh, of course just undo. Um, I'm not sure what the, the undo limit is in in Maya, but Control Z, uh, the default Control Z is the undo button uh, in Maya. All right, so I'm going to move this up, and all I'm doing is selecting both these objects and dragging these up here. Now, what I want to do is I want to make this be the reverse side here. And if I come in here and I start rotating these, and again, you're like, oh, I'm going to come here and rotate these. And I select the E key to rotate and grab this and start rotating. And like you would think this would rotate them around. It does technically rotate them around. But the problem is these objects each have their own independent pivot point. Um, we're going to go into great detail in pivot points um, in a future lecture. But each one of these objects has an independent uh, pivot point. Now we could merge these together and solve that problem, um, but in this, in this particular case, it's easier just to grab one, move it up, and then you know grab them both and move it down. Take the easy solutions when you can. So this is the particular case. So there we go. We have a pillar. Um, I'm going to go ahead and talk about how to save this, and then we'll finish that up, and then we'll continue duplicating out the rest of these pillars in, in the next lecture. So uh, saving in Maya is um, pretty straightforward. Uh, we'll talk about how to save as projects, but right now we can just save as scenes. So to save a scene, it's just file, save as, save scene as, and you can see I have nothing saved, so it's untitled. If I save scene as, it'll open up and it will want to put it in a default dialog uh, spot. This is fine. Um, you can save it in the default scenes. Um, I generally just say, I'm just gonna save it to the desktop or some other folder. You can navigate to the file browser. Um, you can go anywhere you want to put it. For example, if I come in here, and I type in temple, and then hit save, we save out our uh, file as a Maya uh, binary file, .mb file. Uh, the two most common file types of Maya is um, .mb, which is binary, and ma, which is ASCII, uh, my ASCII files. They're, they're both fine in the cases of what we're doing. So there's our start of our temple. Uh, Hopefully you enjoyed that. See you next time.